If you do a lot of things involving structs in Game Maker, you might have a question, and it's a very legitimate question. Uh, what exactly happens when you remove a reference to a struct and you can no longer access its data? And that will progress on to a discussion of the Game Maker garbage collector. So if I have, for example, let me say uh, list is going to equal ds list create, and then uh, let's say repeat 100,000 million, I think that's million, repeat 1 million times ds list add onto the list and uh, let's just give it a struct containing some data. It, it doesn't matter what the data is. Um, all right, that's the data that all these structs contain. And we're going to add 1 million copies of the same struct to this DS list. And you might wonder uh, if you were to later on, I don't know, if keyboard check pressed uh, vk underscore tab um, ds list destroy wow ds list destroy that list and then render everything that was in it inaccessible um, what would happen to these structs will they just hang around in memory uh, will they will they just sit there forever and eventually cause your game to slow down and crash and and this is going to lead into a conversation about the game maker garbage collector No, not that kind. So for all practical purposes, the Game Maker Garbage Collector is something that you do not have to worry about. It's going to run in the background. It's going to, I believe it runs on a separate thread, um, a separate uh, processing thread, apart from the main game, like the main game logic. And it will periodically just do its thing and check for memory that is no longer accessible by the game, and it will reclaim that memory, and it will let you allocate it for other things in the future. And uh, just like the just like the garbage collectors in real life, uh, it's gonna do its job, and you really don't have to worry about like ensuring that it's running, and you don't have to do things like uh, specifically asking it to run and and do anything like that. And as soon as I said that, I realized that metaphor falls apart because we have had to uh, call the sanitation department and remind them that they skipped our street on several occasions in the past. Was that an overshare? Don't worry, the actual game maker garbage collector is better than that. So I'm going to run the game. I'm going to run the game in the debugger because the debugger has a system resources view that is a little bit more accurate than the Windows Task Manager. Uh, that's not to say Task Manager is bad or anything, but it will also uh, record memory usage that is, um, accounts for some things other than what like Game Maker itself is using, like pertaining to the game window and stuff. And uh, the uh, the view in the debugger will cut through that a little bit. So if I run the game, we can see that. Uh, off the bat, the memory usage is going to skyrocket to about 960 megabytes for those million structs. If I were to hit the tab key, I hit tab and not caps lock, right? There we go. Uh, if I were to hit the tab key, we can see that when we do that and when we destroy the list, the, um, and it wasn't instantaneous. You probably heard me hit the key a few seconds before you actually saw the graph change. Uh, but when you destroy the list, when all these struct instances become inaccessible, uh, then the memory usage is going to go way down, the garbage collector is going to do its thing, um, and that memory is going to be freed for, for future use. You'll notice that when I do that, even though, uh, in theory, all of this should have, been, should have been deleted by the game, and we should be down to, I think, four or five megabytes of memory is, like, Game Maker's ambient background temperature. Um, we're idling at about 110, and that is not because there is, like, a memory leak in the garbage collector or anything. Uh, that is because the way that this is handled is all very, like, hazy and, um, not an exact science. I, I shouldn't say that. Um, it is an exact science, but it's, uh, there's a lot of hand-waving going on, because as far as the computer is concerned, uh, memory that you are not using is memory that is wasted. Specifically, memory that is unallocated is memory that is wasted, so... Uh, the Game Maker system, and uh, this goes for other programs running on your computer as well, will hang on to some amount of uh, of RAM in the background, even after it's been freed. And that will make it so that um, it's faster to allocate in the future, because you don't have to go through like the whole process of waiting in line, asking for the, asking for the operating system to give you more memory, and having to wait for approval, and letting the, uh, the OS's town council vote on whether or not it's going to give it to you or anything. This is getting out of hand.
Anyway, uh, if I were to do this uh, again, let's say in the step event, if I were to press another key, let's say the space key, and if I were to do this again, uh, then we would see that our memory usage would bounce back up, and then if I keep keep going between the uh, the tab key and the space key, uh, we're going to be uh, allocating memory and freeing memory, and I, I think I hit the tab key instead of the caps lock key again. I'm waiting. Thank you, Game Maker. Uh, our memory usage is dropping off. Space bar. It's going to go back up. Not quite to what it was before, uh, because once again, the uh, the way that the program allocates and uh, frees memory is a little bit hand wavy, and it's not perfect, and it doesn't mean there's a memory leak. Uh, tab should cause us to drop off a bit again. And you can keep doing this for however however much patience you have to sit here and stare at the memory graph. Uh, it seems that it's deciding to hang on to it this time. I have noticed that if you frequently allocate in free memory, it tends to it tends to err on the side of the, the higher memory number instead of recycling most of it every time. And you can see that if I uh, if I hit the the spacebar repeatedly, our memory usage is just just going to go up and up and up. Uh, that is perhaps not ideal. I am running this. Uh, the, ga the game is set to use the 64-bit uh, the Windows runner, so I have 32 gigabytes to play with before, before my computer breaks. Uh, but if I were to hit the tab key again, let's see if it'll actually give me back that one and a half gigabytes. And, and, and Game Maker is like, uh, I don't think so. Hey. So, you really, really should not ever have to do any of this, but there are a couple functions related to the garbage collector that you can use. Uh, if you hit GC and then control space, you can see there's a collection of them. Heh, <laughs> collection. Uh, one, the easy one, GC collect, this will perhaps not force the garbage collector to run, but it will just slightly give it a little bit of encouragement to do so. Um, maybe you can use this if you, like, delete a large amount of data and you want to you want to try to get it cleared up as soon as possible. Uh, this is the only garbage collector function that you realistically should ever have to use outside of like debugging things. Um, there's a few others, gc underscore enable. This will enable or disable the garbage collector. Please don't do this. Um, if you really want to, you can set that to true. That will turn it on. I wanted to set it to false. This will turn it off. And uh, this will cause the garbage collector to never run ever. And if I were to uh, start the game, and if I were to hit the tab key, um, we're going to be we're, uh, not seeing the memory usage drop off like we were before. No matter how much I hit the tab key, if I hit the spacebar key, we absolutely will see it climb. All right, maybe don't do that. Um, early on, like very early in the in the 2.3 beta, the garbage collector was a little bit on the buggy side, and occasionally you might have had to actually do this disable the automatic garbage collection and only run uh, GC collect on uncertain intervals. Um, but those days are long gone. Those bugs have long been fixed and now there should be no reason that we ever have to do this. Uh, if I were to hit the tab key and then manually invoke a garbage collection run, we should see it, uh, again, give it a little bit of encouragement, clear up at least a little bit of that data but we don't need to do that really. I'm gonna not do that. There is GC, there's a couple other ones. Um, is enabled, obviously, uh, is the counterpart to GC enable. Uh, that will tell you if the garbage collector is turned on or not. Uh, there is GC get stats, and if you really want to see the data this, that this will return, you can look at its, um, look at its entry in the manual. Uh, pretty much nothing in here is interesting unless one, you have found a bug and you are trying to report it to get to yo-yo games or two you're just really curious about what's going on in the background um if any of this information is important to you uh and you are in the business of like writing your own garbage collector uh you are probably already not using game maker i say as someone who's been using game maker for 3d for a very long time maybe i shouldn't make claims like that and then lastly, uh, this one is a little bit interesting, I think, but it's usually something you don't have to touch. Uh, GC target frame time. Uh, by default, Game Maker will uh, will give the garbage collector uh, 100 microseconds, 100 microseconds, uh, or one ten thousandth of a second, or uh, one tenth of a millisecond uh, every frame. And this is so that if 
there is a lot of data that needs cleaning, then GameMaker won't temporarily freeze as it does so. Uh, it will only do a certain amount of cleaning per frame. Uh, that is why when I hit the spacebar, or when I hit the, uh, the tab key to uh, free uh, this DS list and get the garbage collector to do its thing, that is why it took a number of frames to, to actually do that. Uh, because there was a limited amount of work that the garbage collector was allowed to do each frame. Hey. Um, if you want to increase this, by all means, if you if you feel for whatever reason that the garbage collector is taking up too much time, uh, you can reduce this to 50 or 25 or if you really, really are not interested in any, um, in getting your memory back in a timely manner, uh, you can set it to 10 microseconds, but realistically, uh, 100 microseconds is fine. That is uh, 1 160th of your frame time budget at 60 frames per second, which uh, in most cases should be fine. And that's a maximum, so that doesn't even guarantee that the garbage collector will be taking that much time per frame. It just means that that's uh, what it's allowed. Uh, what else? So obviously, this works for structs. Uh, the garbage collector kind of got a big a big fanfare when Yo-Yo Games added it in 2.3 with use for, uh, for structs. Uh, it also works for arrays. And if you wanted to uh, allocate a bunch of arrays, uh, it would do the exact same thing. It would behave the same way. Uh, the garbage collector would check to see if the uh, the array is referenced by anything in memory, and then if it wasn't, it would it would mark it as a, as inaccessible, and then eventually delete it. Um, another thing, people have asked occasionally if there is a way to detect when a struct has been garbage collected. For example, some sort of destructor that can be called when something is garbage collected, and unfortunately, there is no way to do that automatically. And I don't believe Yo-Yo Games has plans to add destructors for to um to Game Maker any day soon. A couple of people have come up with their own ad hoc solutions to that, and they generally involve something uh, called uh, weak references. And weak references are rather interesting. Uh, these don't allow you to directly detect when something has been deleted, but they kind of they kind of allow you to keep an eye on structs uh, from like a from a distance, so you could kind of just like look over your shoulder and check on them every every once in a while. And these are a whole thing. Uh, if you have a struct that contains like uh, some something that needs to be explicitly deleted, like a, uh, a DS map or a buffer or something like that, uh, let's let's initialize a couple of buffers to size 100, like this. Um, this will cause problems with the garbage collector, not because it'll like make the garbage collector break or anything like that, but because uh, when the struct is deleted the buffer that it points to will not be, and uh, that can be a bit of a problem because buffers need to be explicitly destroyed, otherwise you do have a memory leak, and you can use weak references to keep track of structs to allow you to automatically manage things like that, and I kind of want to make a separate video on that later because it, it can be a lot of fun. Alright, fine. To me it can be fun. To normal people, I don't know, I guess it's just another tool in the toolbox. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. In the future, I will make a video on your weak references as promised, but for now, I hope you found this interesting. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game. I like to focus on the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, so if any anything like this interests you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You can see some fun things like your name in the credits, or um, once a month I post a preview of my future plans, and if you wanted to pledge I would definitely appreciate it. Once again, I hope you found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Posho, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, The Nothing Happened, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.